In late November 2015, my wife and I were traveling into Seaside. It was about one o'clock in the morning, maybe midnight, one o'clock, somewhere in there. And the weather was really bad, it was rainy. I guess it wasn't bad for November, but it was bad. Just as we were about to go into Seaside on 101, Seaside, Oregon, there was basically a river uh, crossing right over 101 and there were vehicles there. There was an emergency vehicle in the middle with a sign up that said high water and there were a, a few vehicles going through it. I was driving a late model Toyota Camry. We stopped before going through the river kind of contemplated what our options were. There aren't a lot of places to stay. If we backpedal, we get, would have had to go back to Cannon Beach. And I'm not sure, I wasn't sure of where we could stay in Cannon Beach. Eventually, I made the decision to just go for it, just try and cross over. There were some vehicles that were crossing over, although there were also some vehicles that were disabled on the other side. So obviously that wasn't necessarily my brightest decision. We got about halfway across before the car just died and wouldn't start again. The emergency vehicle that was there, it's just a pickup, an orange pickup with lights on it that belonged to the city of Seaside, I think. And they pushed us through the rest of the river, whatever you want to call it, the overflow there, and onto the other side. But our car still wouldn't start. We let it dry out for an hour or so and it still wouldn't start. So I called for roadside assistance. The first thing that they asked me after staying on hold for a while and talking to an operator is where am I at? What's my address? It's pitch dark. There are no real landmarks nearby me. And while I'm sure that if I could talk to the tow truck driver, they'd be, it'd be easy to find me, just look for the river on 101, right? South of Seaside. But in order for them to send out a tow truck, they need to have an address to connect it to, to put into their system. Now, luckily I had cell service, so I was trying to look up things that were near me and trying to find an address, any address I could give them that would be close. And that's when my wife came up with a better idea yet. She typed into Google, where am I? It actually gave us the coordinates, the longitude and latitude where we were located. And we were able to give that information to the operator. We had to call him back and stay on hold for a while and all of that. But we were able to give that information to the operator and the operator was able to send a tow truck. That's just an example of one of those things that even though I've been in this business and I've used Google since its inception, I didn't know Google did that. So now I'm going to list off in rapid fire fashion a few ways to use Google that are different than just your regular searching that we call Googling. Let's start with the Google feature that I already mentioned. You can type into Google, where am I? It's telling me the city I'm in. If you do it from your cell phone, then it'll actually tell you the exact coordinates where you are. On the computer, it won't tell you exactly where you are because it doesn't have GPS information. Have you ever been on someone's website and you're having trouble finding something that you're pretty sure is on that site? They don't have a search box or their search box just isn't working very well. This is an area where you can use a feature in Google to search the site instead. All you have to do is go to Google, type in site, S-I-T-E, colon, and then the URL. So we'll put in www.justinswebdesign.com and then you put in a space and whatever you want to search for. So let's say portfolio. And what this does is it searches all of the listings in Google for that domain and brings up all of the results using the power of Google. 
as an added trick here, if you're using Chrome and you're on the site, you can go up here to the address bar and because you can search Google using the address bar at the top here, then you can type in site colon right before, let me show you this here, right to the left of the HTTP or HTTPS in this case, right before that you type in site colon and then you go to the end of it and put in a space and then you type in what you want to search for. It does the same thing, it brings up the results in Google. You can use a similar strategy to look up kinds of websites. And I use this in a real specific area where let's say you wanna look up something and you want to get the government website that relates to it. Let's say I'm looking up banking regulations. If I just look up banking re regulations, banking regulations, then you'll see the Wikipedia page comes up. This is compliance alliance.com so that's not a government site we know the government sites because they have the .gov at the end of it so here's uh, the fdic.gov location way down here at the bottom of the results but if i just wanted to get the results from government sites i can put in and this doesn't have to be at the beginning it can be on the beginning or the end i usually put it at the beginning i don't know why but site colon and then asterisk, like it's a wild card, dot gov in a space. Now if I bring that up, it'll only show me the results for the government. And so it's bringing up the Federal Reserve and all of that. So you can do the same thing with a dot org or whatever, but dot org and, and the like doesn't, don't really have any or very many restrictions on them, whereas the .gov is always a government site, and so that's a useful way to be able to look at just Google for government. You can also use Google as a timer. All you have to do is type in timer, the amount of time, hit enter, and it'll actually start running the timer just like that. You can also switch over to a stopwatch, and when this goes off, it'll beep. You can also use Google as a calculator. You can either type in calculator, and it'll come up with a calculator, or you can type in like one plus two, and it'll actually come up with a calculator and give you the answer at the same time. You can also search for specific file types. This is especially useful if you know that you're looking for a PDF form or some kind of a PDF document or a Word document. For example, let's say I wanna have a business letter and I wanna have a template, but I wanna search for the Word extension, the Word document. Then I could use file type colon, doc, and you can see next to the results it says doc, and that's because it's actually bringing up the documents. Now, I wouldn't use it for docs basically because of the uh, potential for getting viruses through downloading Microsoft documents that you're not aware of, but a lot of times you do it for PDF, and so it'll bring up the actual PDFs, from these places. I'll end with one of my favorite alternate ways of using Google, and that's as a spell checker. I don't know if you're like me, when I'm spelling something sometimes within Word or something like that, I'll be so far off that Word doesn't come up with the correct word that I'm looking for. It just doesn't know what I'm, it doesn't know what I'm trying to write and in those cases almost always I can put the same word misspelled the same way into Google and so it's misspelled and Google will come up and say showing results for and the correct spelling of it 
More significantly, it's going to show me a lot of times the definition under it. So I know it's the right word and it's not coming up with another word that's spelled similarly and isn't the actual word that I'm looking for.